I'm all ready. Morning. Morning. Someone puts that on. Oh, this is a big one. It's a bit too big. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> There's another good one here. Yeah. And you've got these, oh geez, got these two huge ones here. Oh. This courgette is almost as tall as you, my love. Hi, good morning. Welcome to the veg garden in the height of summer. It's just gone nine o'clock in the morning and it's already very, very warm down here. As you might be able to tell from some of the size of these plants and the number of flowers and the number of fruit that we've been harvesting off them, we're getting a lot of food out of this garden, which is very cool, but we need to do something with it. Otherwise it's going to become nothing more than compost. So today in this video, we're going to preserve uh, some of the things that we're harvesting here today in a number of different ways. So we're going to do a bit of cooking. So once we've finished pruning down here and tidying things up a little bit, we'll see you over at the kitchen shed. Can you add this up for me? 1 1.8, 2.3, 1.8, 1.5, 1.5, 1.2, 1.6, 1. And that was just today. We picked up these a couple of days ago. That's another four kilos, but these are going to a friend. 500 grams. Excuse me for a second. You're excused. 860 for those two courgettes. Chickens in the kitchen. Come on. Another 240. So that's 1.1 kilo. Excuse me again. <laughs> 632 grams of pickling cucumber. And 850 grams of, of regular cucumber. These may not be great though because we let them go a bit too long. Well, there we go. We're going to start keeping better records in the future, but we've got so much else going on at the moment. We don't weigh everything all the time, but thanks for keeping track for me. Alrighty, I'm going to hide in the, uh, the shade of the kitchen shed. Um, if you've not seen any of our videos before, I'll briefly explain the kitchen shed. It's a shed, but it's also a kitchen. It's where we keep all of our solar equipment, but also where we do all of our cooking. We've got loads and loads and loads of this summer squash. It's basically a courgette, but it's uh, yellow and round rather than long and green. And it's very sweet. And it's very sweet, yes. Just like you, my love. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> it's a little bit sweet we're going to turn it into a soup and the plan is to can that water bath it and that means that we can preserve it for a longer period of time rather than having to eat it all fresh because we're pulling out literally kilos of this stuff every day we've not harvested for a couple of days which is why there was a lot today but it could be anywhere from two to six kilos per day we're harvesting at the moment we're giving it away as fast as we can the chickens like it too and uh, of course we're eating a lot of it grilled souped is that a word roasted in curries <laughs> stir fries all sorts of things just not for breakfast i yet. think we have had it for breakfast actually <laughs> so we're going to make a soup and we're also going to freeze some as well but we probably won't show you that because how interesting is cutting something up and freezing it but we've also got a few other things as well some normal courgette green ones and yellow ones both grown from seed and we're going to turn those into like a summer squash pickle and there's something else ah pickles 
We're also going to make some pickles. So we sowed some cucumbers again from seed, uh, which are supposed to be small, although that only works if you harvest them in time. And we were a bit late with some of these, but Kylie loves gherkins, cornichons, pickles. And so we're going to pickle some. And we picked up some spices recently and we'll show you the whole thing. We'll talk about all the stuff we're doing. And if you're the kind of person who wants recipes, we'll stick all this stuff inside of our Make Do Grow Club. You can check out all the details of that. There's a link in the description. The first thing that we have to do is get prepared so that we don't go crazy, don't trip over ourselves because we've got a very small space to work with. So we need to do a bit of washing up and a bit of organizing of all the ingredients and various things. Yeah, we don't have a tap up here, so we'll use the hose. These ones are going to be slightly tougher because they're bigger. Generally, the smaller they are, I haven't got any small ones out here, but the skin tends to be softer. They're actually nicer when they're grilled and stuff like that. But if these are going to get chopped up and cooked into a soup and blended, then I think these will be fine. I'll just put them up here on this handy shelf. Well, they need to make a window here, don't we? Yeah, we still haven't got to the window thing here. <laughs> when was it that we built this shed? 2021? 20, Last March. Last February. March. Oh yeah, February. Yeah, we'll get there eventually. Can you see me above all these pumpkin-like <laughs> squash? I'll take this big one out of the way first. So, yeah, this is just a bit crazy, isn't it? Look at all those seeds. I would love to be able to say seed save from this because this is actually a UK variety. Um, well, we got it in the UK a long time ago. It's called One Ball. It is a courgette, even though it doesn't look anything like one. Um, but it's an F1 hybrid, which means you can't save the seed from it. Which is a shame. So, we grew these last year. You mean we tried to grow them? Or we tried to grow them last year. I think we sowed maybe only three plants. Um, and they didn't really take very well. We had one that did make it, which we planted, but it really just didn't get going. And we got a couple of fruit from it. And I really like these, which is a good thing, I guess. Um, but this year, to make sure that we got a slightly better harvest, we sowed, no, we sowed three again, but they, but they all worked. And uh, we ended up with just these three massive plants. And uh, they have just been, pumping out courgette for weeks now. We've been trying to give away a lot to our friends and neighbors. People stop being your friend if you keep giving them <laughs> loads Thank of stuff that they don't want. <laughs> so this is garlic. It started off live like this, although we made the, the puree when the garlic was fresh. We had a really bad garlic harvest this year. I think we got rust on the leaves, they went all brown, and the bulbs didn't really grow. So we got these tiny little cloves, or tiny bulbs with tiny cloves. And so I did a bit of an experiment. I dried some, I think I've got maybe four or five bunches about this kind of size. Um, but they're not great for peeling because they're really, really small. And so what I did when some of them were fresh and still very green, I minced them down. I had a full jar like this and I put a bit of lemon juice in there just to um, give it a bit of acidity for longer term storage. And this was probably about a month and a half ago now and it's still perfectly usable. It's not gone brown, it's not oxidized. And it's actually really handy to have a jar of this in the fridge because I can just grab a spoon, grab some out and chuck it in. And it means that I don't have to mince a bunch of tiny garlic cloves, particularly if I'm doing a big batch of something. And I can chuck in one, maybe two spoonfuls like this. And I don't know how many cloves that would have been. That could have been an entire head of this tiny garlic. So it's a great time saver. I'll put a bit more in, because we're gonna have quite a lot of soup to flavor here. Mm. Oh. 
because we're doing such a big batch, I'm having to do it in stages. And because we've got a large volume of courgette, which has got quite a lot of liquid in it, which is good for soup, uh, it's steaming a bit too much and not able to get much color on the, uh, on the squash. So it's not gonna have as much flavor as if we did a small batch and we got a little bit of like caramelization on there because uh, there is a bit of sweetness in them. So for the last round of courgette, I think I broke it up into three stages. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow mustard seed. I'm gonna pop them in this oil, which is heating up. Just add another bit of depth of flavor. You only have to do this if you're feeling fancy, as we uh, like to say in the recipes that we write up. Um, so I'm just gonna do like a uh, tablespoon or whatever size spoon this happens to be of yellow mustard seed. And we will eventually need these chilies into jars. We yes. just got them a couple of days ago. Well, actually, the guy who runs the Chili Experience, which is a local business in Portugal, they're about they're near Tamar, which is mm, maybe 40 minutes from us. He's planning to open a shop where he's going to have all of his huge range of herbs and spices and chilies that he grows himself available in a like a self-service glass jar refill system, which is something that is I've not seen anywhere else around here in Portugal and so I'm very excited about that because we'll be able to build ourselves a little herbs and spice rack system thing with glass jars and then just go and take them to refill um, and then there won't be as much plastic which is good so my seeds are popping do you want to get a shot of that oh, that really good doesn't it uh, so we're running low on gas this is a camping stove, so it has a tiny bottle. I don't know how many kilos it is, like a four kilo gas bottle. We don't change it that often, surprisingly, but I noticed that the, the things were cooking a little bit slower than usual, so might have to go get some more gas to finish this off. Nice. Probably have a bit of a taste test. Yeah, before we do that, I'll just mention these jars because mm. a lot of people won't have seen this style of jar. They will have seen the double ringed jar. These are WEC jars, so glass lids. Um, Which means infinitely reusable. Yeah, and even when they break, then they just go into the glass recycling, obviously. Um, and it's the rubber seal that seals them. So you put the clips on in the canner. You, when you take them out, you leave the clips on for 24 hours, just like you would the normal kind of ring stuff. Um, and then you take the clips off, and then they just store like this. And they're excellent. It's a German brand. Um, they've been tested a lot in Europe. I'm not too sure about like FDA approval, but FDA approval doesn't really mean a lot in Europe. Um, when I first started using these, I found that the clips clips are a little bit fiddly, but once you get used to how they clip on, they, um, they work a treat. Two clips on either side of the glass jar. And then when you come to eat them, you just pull the tab and then it... Um, oh, so you pull the rubber seal, it lets some air in, and then the jar lid comes off. Yeah. No worries. Exactly. It's very cool. Um, they also sell uh, like plastic, because once you take once you've opened it and put, you want to put it in the fridge, they only eat half a jar. The glass jar doesn't stay on very well. Of course, you can use clips for it in the fridge, um, but they also have like little plastic lids that you can get for when you have opened a jar. Cool. Um, to, yeah. Oh, so, that's better. Yeah. It's a noisy inverter when we're using. Well, it's because it's so machines. warm in here. Have a bit of a taste. Be honest, but I'm be not, nice. I'm not the best person with tasting words, you know. Mm. It's good. <laughs> it's good. It's tasty. Is that all we get? It's, it's garlicky. Good. It's creamy. 
even though there's no cream or any dairy in there. Yeah. It's a really creamy courgette, so mm. it's giving a nice creamy taste. Told you, I don't have the words. <laughs> That's your job. <laughs> If you watched the orange juice canning video I did, I just used the big pot there on the stove with jars in it. And they weren't these fancy whack jars? No, and because we know we're going to be doing a lot of canning to, to preserve our harvest, I went and invested in one of these electric canners. So it takes 14 of these jars, which are 580 mil. So in American terms, 14 pint jars. Yeah. And the great thing I love about it is you can set the time and the temperature and then you can walk away and it will start the time once it reaches the temperature and then it'll be on for that amount of time and then it will uh, beep to tell me that it's going to turn itself off because it's processed. Perfect. Um, it means that I don't have to stand watching it like I used to have to do uh, with the more manual pot. Look at that. That is a can of full of soup. Job done. Yeah, so the Le Parfait website says for veg soup, and I double checked in a Facebook group, it's one hour for a full can of uh, pint jars at 100 degrees. Good morning, it's a new day and we're going to do a little bit more preserving today. It got so hot yesterday that we just had to quit after lunch and uh, go and do something else instead. As we rejoin the proceedings this morning, there is something interesting to show you that didn't quite go to plan, but it's a learning opportunity for us and maybe for you as well. So we thought we'd start off by showing you that and then get into another couple of recipes that we're going to do today with some cucumbers and some courgette or zucchini. So let's go and take a look at what happened to our soup. So, um, yesterday when we opened the top of the canner to, so it had finished and then you meant to leave it for five or 10 minutes to, for the water to stop boiling and then take the jars out. I noticed that there was some soup in the water, which is never a good sign. You can actually smell it as we approach. Yeah. Um, and then I, when, we, when I was taking them out, I was like, oh, I don't think this worked. So this is what a jar, oh, so that way, mm. it's, it's down to like here. I mean, the consistency is also weird, but I think that's normal when you can things that the consistency changes. Because when you shake it, it's all fine. It just looks like soup. So it's just, I don't know if you can see it. It actually looks coming. like it's thickened up a bit, which yeah. is nice in a way. Well, that's because <laughs> half of the water has gone out of it. So I went to do some research last night as to whether it was going to still be safe, given that a lot of it has come out. So almost all the jars, let's see another example, have nowhere near. lost something, yeah. Yeah, so it's something called siphoning. There's several reasons for it. The reason that I think this happened in this particular instance was it didn't leave enough headroom. And, and so that space at the top of the jar. Yeah, you and I'll explain why. So I'm used to canning with these types of jars, which are the lugly jars. And the lid goes over the top of the glass so when you fill them you can kind of fill them to just a little bit above this line and then this goes way over the top and so you always have that much space plus whatever extra when using one of these weck jars and I did notice it when I was putting the lids on the lid actually goes into the jar mm. so here's a jar and you'll see that the profile of the lid I think you can see yeah, is about. if you go it that way down it bit, sits yeah. down so it sits down into the jar and actually comes down uh, below this lip and so I hadn't anticipated that because I haven't used these jars very much before and I didn't leave, leave enough headroom no chickens in the kitchen shed Come it's on. a little bit cramped down here with Let's chickens in the way. that way. How'd go you on. go? Okay, I'll take you out then. Right. So I guess that's the learning is that with these jars, you've got to take your headroom... Almost from that from, line. 
yeah from below this kind of lip which I didn't do <laughs> so what happens then when there's not enough headroom and the liquid's boiling because it's at 100 degrees is the air the hot air the evaporation forces more to come out so it almost like it forces the lid up a bit and, and then stuff out. can come out and the these side. just like um the 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 two-part twist lids they're designed as this is to allow some air out that's how you get a vacuum and how you get the jars to seal but you don't want that much to come out so you can also see maybe that it's pushed the seal mm. uh, not on all of them but on many of them out a little bit and so when I saw that I was like oh I don't know if they're gonna have sealed or not we did a test it's well and truly sealed yeah. Um, and so even though they've siphoned, they're still safe to use, eat and store and no problems. Um, so yeah, something I've learned about using WEC jars is the headroom needs to come a little bit lower. Um, and I didn't have the problem when I did, I have done some orange juice in WEC jars, but because it's not at 100 degrees, I was doing it at 65, I'm guessing it doesn't heat up as much and boil over as much because I didn't have that problem. See? That's also sealed, and that's one of the ones again that has the the seal has been pushed a little bit to the side. So I think all of these will be fine. It also gives us the option of adding a little bit of liquid to it when we go to eat it. Because we reheat them before yeah. eating. So that was the other thing. In the US, everyone has probably already told me in the comments that it's not safe to just water bath soups. And what the US do and what Europe does is very different. In Europe, there are many, many organizations who have tested water bathing of many things. And there are some canners here who just do water bathing, including meat and dairy and everything. So it's 100% safe with the added 10 to 15 minutes boiling time when you serve. So when we go to have this, we will either put it in a saucepan or in the microwave mm -hmm. and then cook it for another 10 to 15 minutes, probably just 10 minutes because it's got no meat or dairy, to make sure that any any potential nasties are cooked off at that point. Um, but very, very safe. Something that we might do next time, instead of blending it and then canning it, we may just put the cooked vegetables directly into the jars, process those, and then when we come time to want to eat it, we can then blend it and reheat it at the same time. Yeah. Uh, Cause it will speed up the, the processing of many, many jars uh, to not have to put it through the blender first. So we might try that next time. No chickens in the kitchen. Let's go, let's go. Come on, go, 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 you too. One more thing is because these did uh, let's say boil over, siphon, uh, all of the jars have got a little bit of soup on them. So I bought, oh, there's one that didn't seal. So that one will get eaten today. Lunch. Lunch. Um, yeah, they will have to wash them all down, wipe them all down, um, so that there's no stickiness on them so we don't get ants and whatever in. Oh, there's another one, that's two. Big lunch. <laughs> Let's double check everything else. From seed, we grew these gherkins, pickling cucumbers. They're meant to be harvested nice and small. Um, I even have some smaller ones to pickle. Um, we have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not using a particular recipe. I'm taking a recipe that's for pickled green beans and I'm adapting it because how hard can pickling gherkins be? Well, um, you say that, but we seem to <laughs> mess up everything. Well, there's more gherkins where these came from. So it's very simple. I'm going to put some vinegar and water and some spices we're gonna with some honey and we're gonna heat that up and make a brine while that's heating up I'm gonna slice the gherkins shove them in a jar put the brine on top put the lids on job done well end of video that was great <laughs> thanks very much <laughs> pretty simple it's annoying I can't take that whole cap off you might be able to or I might be able to yeah maybe you could do that there we go I'll use my manly skills to open that thank you very much so this should be 500 it says that on the bottle. Well, I can test if my scales are working. No, oh, it says 503. 
Yeah. <laughs> Good value. So. Interestingly, this is the only size of vinegar that you can buy in our local shop. Yeah, so if there's anyone that lives in Portugal, in central Portugal, in the interior, that knows where we can buy larger quantities, like, you know, five litre bottles, please let us know because I hate the plastic on these. And that's just how it is. Yeah. Sometimes. This is like the most eclectic kitchen set <laughs> anyone could have ever built. <laughs> uh, something you'll never see anywhere else, and hopefully we won't for long. Right, some water. And this is local honey from I mean, our local market. Mussels have. Do you need? Mm, I need some. Uh, you need some manly help again. Some, thanks. I must have loosened it for you. Yeah, that's what they all say. <laughs> uh, that's about a tablespoon. Doesn't look very appetising at the moment, but trust me, it should. Mm. Mm. Nice honey. Oh. Not, not you. Uh, so, sea salt, again, we don't really measure things around here. There's about four teaspoons. That's a little bit too much though. Can you tell us what's in this spice mix? Yeah, so be, it And you need to shake it first, by the way. Okay, so we need to put it in a jar. Mm. Uh, coriander, brown mustard seeds, yellow mustard seeds, cloves, chili crush, it's fancy. Black pepper whole, dill tips, juniper berries, allspice, and kibbled ginger. Mm. Three euros for oh, 100 grams. So it's a spicy pickle because it's got chili and yeah. mustard and stuff like that. So there's lots of recipes I've seen online that just have mustard seed and dill seed. And sometimes fresh dill. And sometimes fresh dill. Dill is really difficult to get hold of here. I'm going to grow some, but it's Next the year. wrong season. No, no, we can plant dill. Yeah, we can or plant we can it sow. in the autumn or in the fall for those Americans. That we're going to stick onto. We did run out of gas yesterday, so whilst we were cooking dinner. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to put that onto the barbecue hot plate, and while that is doing that, gently. I will start slicing up the cucumbers. Cool. Are you in charge? Yeah. Always. <laughs> so Are you arranging your cucumbers <laughs> by size? I was about to say, anyone who has watched our antics for some time will know that I'm a little bit uh, OTT sometimes on... OTT or OCD? All of that. Or OTT on the OCD. <laughs> So because I have two different jar sizes, I know that the small ones will go into small jars and the big ones will go in these but won't go in these. So if I go from small to big, then I can fill my jars in order of size. This is Don't. why people tell us we overthink <laughs> things. <laughs> Whatever, it keeps me happy. I mean, my thinking is you want to jam in as many as you can. Yeah, I'm on board with that kind of thinking. Jam them in. Mm, it smells so fresh. Well, some were literally picked out of the garden this morning. Infusing nicely. I'll put this into a jar, for, uh, a jar, a jug for you. Jug. Um, and this just seals based on the hot liquid yeah. in the jar. Will. You could also um, just stick it straight in, the, straight in the fridge and use it up within the next four to six weeks, I think they say. Okay. Um, but if it creates a vacuum seal, then you can store it for up to a year. So Amazing. Even better. Alrighty, it's time for our final recipe, which is a courgette or zucchini relish. This is something that should work nice with cheese, burgers, maybe even on salads, just to add a little bit of extra flavor and a bit of texture. We're gonna to get to cooking it in a second, but first I'll show you all the ingredients, which I've prepped ahead of time because you don't really need to see me chop stuff. So we've got some, uh, a mixture of onion, red and white, both from the garden. In this bowl here, we've got a range of different uh, courgettes. We've got some of the yellow squash, the ball squash on top, 
But there is, at the bottom, there's some uh, green courgette and yellow courgette, the long ones that we picked yesterday. For our flavouring, I've got a bit of a spice mix here. This is some of the same pickling mix that Kylie used for the gherkins, uh, but I removed any of the cloves or the juniper or any all spicy stuff just because I didn't want it to be too Christmassy. There's also some added uh, black mustard seed, yellow mustard seed, and coriander seed, which I harvested from one of our plants that uh, went to seed recently. And we've got some lemon zest and some chili, and I just put a bit of vinegar in there just to try and start getting the flavors going. We've also got a mixture of vinegar and water, equal parts for the kind of liquid component, and we'll add a bit of salt, and we've got some sugar for a bit of sweetness. So it's a very simple recipe. We just chuck everything apart from the salt into the pan, get it going with a bit of oil, and let it cook down until it's a nice kind of relishy consistency, and then we'll stick it in some jars. This is one that doesn't get canned. The uh, the heat of the, the relish itself should make the jars seal, and um, it should be able to last on the shelf unopened for six months, or in the fridge when it has been opened. There are some green ones in there. Ooh, it's very, very warm, but our relish is cooked. Managed to uh, reduce all of the liquid down to almost nothing. Maybe next time I would use a little bit less of the vinegar water mix, just because there's a lot of water in the courgettes themselves. And it took a bit longer than planned to reduce down, maybe uh, 35 minutes or so. I'm gonna turn the heat off, and we're gonna get this into jars. Okay, that is our relish complete. We got six jars. I think they're 200, 200, 290 mil each. And they're very this, hot, so they should seal. And they're very hot, but we've got a little bit left over. So I'm gonna get Kylie to use her words, her descriptive <laughs> words, and do a little taste test for us. Mm. Relishy. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> Can definitely taste the vinegar. In a good way or a bad way? Tastes like a pickled relish. Mm. Um, for me, there's too much onion because I don't really like onion that much, but it's nice and sweet. Yeah, that's why we I use the red onion because mm. it's got more sweetness to it. This would go really well on a burger, except it would fall everywhere, but a burger on a plate with this would be excellent. Um, you didn't want this back, right? No, that's fine. <laughs> Do you think it would go with cheese? Oh yeah, cheese and crackers, a bit of parma ham. Bit of parma ham, oh yeah. Other other grilled meats? Yeah, all the grilled meats. Fish? Can you be too strong for fish? Do you think so? Meatier fish. Like a tuna? Yeah, tuna steak like a with tuna. That would be great. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, so we'll- Or just as a snack. Or just as a snack. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite tasty. Mm, good. Mm. Um, is it too spicy? Just about right. It's good. Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. you're, you're interrupting <laughs> my eating pleasure here. Okay, fine. Right, I need to hide in the shade again because, goodness me, it is very, very warm. I think we're up to 35 degrees on the deck. Anyway, so there we go. We've successfully, uh, for the most part anyway, preserved some of our harvest. We're going to have a lot more of harvest of... Can I do a quick lessons learned here? Oh, yeah. My Hang gherkins... On. Yes? ...have not sealed. Ah. And that's because the brine... Wasn't was hot not enough. hot enough when we right. put it in the jars. And we let it stand a bit while I was fiddling around with the extra bits of cucumber. Mm -hmm. So next time, I won't be fiddling around the extra bits of cucumber. I'm making sure the brine is really hot, but we mm -hmm. can now just stick these in the fridge and eat them over the next four to six weeks. I don't think you're gonna have a problem with that. No, they need to be left for at least a week before they're gonna be tasty. So they will go okay. in the fridge. Cool. 
Thanks very much for the update. And thank you for watching. Um, as I think I was saying, we're gonna have a lot more harvest of these things, but also lots of other stuff as well. We've got loads of peppers, loads of tomatoes, aubergine, melons, more summer squash, winter squash, loads of stuff. In fact, very soon we're gonna do a full garden tour, show you what we've got growing. And maybe we'll talk about some of the things that we plan to do with the excess harvest after we've given some away, fed some to the chickens, made soup, chutneys, relishes, jams, sauces, cordials, all of that kind of stuff. And of course, if you're the kind of person who likes written recipes with ingredients and instructions, then all of that will be available inside the Make Do Grow Club. Of course, there's lots more than just recipes in there, so do go and check that out. Details are in the description. And we will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Can bye. you Can you do that again? See you later. Can I do what again? Say bye. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. We'll see get ya. It. We'll get it right one of these days. Hasta luego. Except for Spanish. Adios, ciao.